There are so many leaks about future Assassin's Creed games, platforms, content and more and in this video we're going to try and have a look at all of them, discussing both the ones that seem to be reliable and also the ones that seem to have less credibility. Plus we're going to discuss all the recent news about Ubisoft's performance, the delayed and cancelled games, the cost reduction approach and how those might or might not have an impact on Assassin's Creed. So let's dive right in and have a look at all the recent Assassin's Creed news. Well, let's start with the recent news involving Ubisoft and its current state. A few days ago, on June the 21st, Ubisoft held its customary call dedicated to the sales of the first quarter of the 2022-2023 to fiscal year that corresponds to the April to June 2022 period, and while they stated that the performance of the company was slightly ahead of target, the number seems to confirm a pretty dire situation, especially compared to the same period last year. But first, let's have a look at the good news. Ubisoft reported the Assassin's Creed brand to have performed ahead of expectations not only for what concerns Valhalla but also Origins and Odyssey with an increased engagement by players following the celebrations of the 15 years anniversary of the brand and of course more news to come in September when the future of Assassin's Creed is going to be unveiled. CEO Yves Gilmo stated that Ubisoft is holding the richest pipeline in the company's history, although it seems like the recent rumors say otherwise, as we'll see, and that the company has signed a new high-value mobile partnership for one of their brands which could be AC, although there is already a plan for a mobile game with Tencent, so I'm not too sure about that. In some nice pr -y words, the CEO stated that the company now needs to focus on cost optimization, efficient working conditions and flexibility, which does show the company's intentions in a very difficult time where, despite stating that the performance is ahead of target, the revenue and other performance indicators are actually shrinking by 10% compared to the same period last year and things in general don't seem to go well at Ubisoft overall. Kotaku has also reported a company-wide email where employees were told to limit their spending to what is essential and orient themselves towards agility and efficiency, something that the CEO himself reportedly started by taking a 30% pay cut. This not exactly great situation at Ubisoft was somehow hinted at already by Bloomberg at the beginning of this year when they leaked the existence of the upcoming Assassin's Creed Rift project and in that article they did mention already that Ubisoft was going to have a pretty thin lineup in 2022 and 2023 as well which clashes with the claim of the richest pipeline we mentioned earlier, citing the several issues that the company had been facing in the recent years as the main reasons behind such lineup. Of course they mentioned the sexual misconduct accusations and the workplace conditions which led many talents to leave the company, but also the issues in production that Ubisoft had with games like Skull and Bones, Beyond Good and Evil 2 and even the Prince of Persia remake being constantly delayed and after 6 months, here we are seeing Ubisoft making some announcements that do seem to confirm the state in which the company seems to find itself. In fact, during the recent earnings call, it was announced that a big game like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora has been pushed to the 2023 to 2024 release and in a very tiny line in the official report it was also announced that the release of a quote unquote smaller unannounced premium game meaning a game that you pay for not a free to play one which was originally stated for the fiscal year of 2022 to 2023 had been pushed to the 2023 to 2024 window as well. Now at this point you should know which game that is but we are going to be talking about that later. These two delays weren't the only negative consequences on Ubisoft's pipeline though. In fact, at a later stage it was announced that Ubisoft also cancelled the development of Splinter Cell VR and Ghost Recon Frontline, a free-to-play tactical shooter set in the Ghost Recon universe, along with two other unannounced projects and while nobody was able to confirm which games those two were, I have a feeling that one of those might be Nexus, the Assassin's Creed VR game that was leaked some time ago, mostly because Assassin's Creed VR and Splinter Cell VR had been two projects that seemed to go hand in hand following a similar development path as they were both launching exclusively on the Oculus platform. But maybe that's just my feeling, Assassin's Creed is Ubisoft's biggest franchise so possibly Nexus got through. Of course there are other bigger and smaller signs of Ubisoft's counteractions to their current negative situation. For example the ambiguity as to whether there's going to be an event fully dedicated to Assassin's Creed or whether AC will just be part of the Ubisoft Forward event coming in September the 10th. 
I'd imagine that under this perspective, having all the announcements about all brands in one single event would be much more cost containing than having many different live streams for each brand, so maybe it's more likely that we are going to see AEC only within the Ubisoft Forward event. Along with that, we can also cite the decommissioning of the online services for pretty much all the Assassin's Creed games up until Assassin's Creed Liberation HD, including access to DLCs and multiplayer modes, and some might say even the reorganization of all the community programs like the Mentors Guild into one single program that is a 2.0 version of the star players. All of these might also be considered steps towards cost reducing and efficiency during these dire times for the company, or maybe not, who knows really. But not all is lost, especially for Assassin's Creed, and this is where we get into the recent leaks which not only are pretty huge, but also there's been so many of them it's actually crazy. So we are going to go through each of them, trying to consider which of them might be more or less reliable, so that we can have a better picture about each of the upcoming Assassin's Creed projects. And we start with Assassin's Creed Rift. We have mentioned it multiple times in our videos, but in case you didn't know, Assassin's Creed Rift is a rumored next Assassin's Creed game that will be set in the Middle East, featuring the city of Baghdad and Sarin Basim from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's reportedly going to be a smaller game than the recent RPG ones, and should be way more focused on stealth gameplay, and it's this notion of Rift being a smaller project that had many people believe that the quote-unquote smaller unannounced premium game that was delayed to the 2023 to 2024 window could actually be Rift, and indeed that was the case, as it was supported in a new report by Bloomberg and written by Jason Schreier, a journalist with a huge track record when it comes to leaks. In fact, the report mentioned that Rift was apparently a DLC morphed into a standalone game to fill in Ubisoft's release schedule in this fiscal year, that would have been between April 2022 and March 2023, and indeed according to Schreier it was originally planned for February of 2023. But, as we said, the game was delayed to the next fiscal year, that is between April 2023 and March 2024, and more specifically to the May to June period, which on paper could help the devs refine the game by having more time, even though usually when games are delayed, especially at Ubisoft, that's because they are potentially in a not amazing state, and that might also be the case for Rift, considering that Kotaku is reporting that sources are telling them that the game is facing new challenges despite the rush to finish it, whatever that might mean. The Bloomberg article also mentioned that Rift's development is spearheaded by Ubisoft Bordeaux, which has mostly been a support studio, as far as I know, up until they led the development of the Wrath of the Druids DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and this would be their first time leading the development of a mainline Assassin's Creed game. So, considering the announced delay, and remember Schreier also mentioned that Rift is going to be officially announced in September, in the Ubisoft Forward event, we might be seeing the start of an 8-10 to 10 months long campaign for Rift, though a good chunk of that time will probably still be focused on Valhalla, while the communication on Rift might ramp up after Valhalla is completely done with Eivor's final chapter at the end of the year. This wasn't the only recent leak or rumor on Rift though. In fact, a few days back, an anonymous user on 4chan, you can already feel how the certainty on the information is slipping away, this anonymous user shared a list of information about Rift's content. Of course, pick this with a huge grain of salt, because this is 4chan and we know nothing about this user. So they mentioned that Rift is going to be actually officially renamed to Anarchy, and apparently that would be the case because the game would be set between 860 and 870 during the Anarchy at Samara, which was a period of extreme internal instability from 861 to 870 in the history of the Abbasid Caliphate that started with the murder of Caliph al mutawakkil which we already discussed in one of our past videos, where we also stated that Samara was the city where Basim's father built the famous Great Mosque before being exiled and dying. Story-wise, according to this post, Basim as a young assassin will have to deal with the politics and machinations of the various caliphs, while dealing with issues such as the assassination of his wife and children, and especially the execution of his father, which are both details that don't really match the established lore. Both because if I'm not mistaken, Basim actually only mentioned one son, and even then it could be just a low-key reference, and especially because it was confirmed that his father died in poverty rather than being executed. 
The rumor also mentioned that the game will show Basim being taken over by Loki, which is something easy to expect, with a mythical section based on the folklore with the Arabian Nights and the Jinns, which is another safe bet considering Ubisoft's recent approach. Worldwide, the game should be focused on Baghdad, which we already knew, and the city will supposedly be bigger than London in Syndicate, with several districts to play with, along with another, smaller map depicting the city of Samara itself and the brief appearance of Jerusalem at the end of the game. Gameplay-wise, the rumor reports on parkour and stealth being better than the last few games, but still not on the level of what fans remember from Assassin's Creed Unity. And finally, the rumor said that Rift or Anarchy would release in early 2023, which has been debunked like a few days later by Bloomberg, so this looks like a reasonable rumor, but it has some cracks here and there that already don't match with some more solid information, so to be honest, I wouldn't lay too much credibility on this, at least for now. I guess we'll see in September. September. Moving on, there are some more information concerning the upcoming Assassin's Creed Infinity platform and the game's plan for it. Now, you may remember from our recent videos, Infinity is going to be the next big thing for Assassin's Creed that is a platform that is going to host several different games slash experiences and potentially more. And let's be even clearer, cause there might have been some confusion among fans, but also some gaming media, Infinity should be the online service platform where the games are going to be released, not a game on its own, which was also stated once again recently by journalist Jason Schreier. Anyway, in one of our recent videos we did report on a rumor slash leak by journalist Jeff Grubb who stated that the next Assassin's Creed experience or game coming after Rift, potentially as part of the Infinity platform, is actually going to be set in Japan and should be a game more oriented towards the RPG style of the recent Assassin's Creed games like Valhalla. In addition to that, more or less in the same time frame, Jason Schreier also added that he had heard of two main experiences currently planned for Infinity. Recently though, a new article, this time by Kotaku, shed a little bit more of light on the matter. Or confused it more, I'll let you decide. The article itself was again on Ubisoft's poor performance, the game's cancellations or delays, the cost cutting, etc. But while they were discussing such matters, they moved on to Assassin's Creed and especially, once again, the games after Rift, and stated that through their sources they had heard of an open world Assassin's Creed game called Project Red, which sometime later Schreier confirmed to be one of the two main experiences planned for Infinity that he had heard about. According to Kotaku's sources, Red will be set in Asia which might or might not match Grub's leak about the, one of the two games planned for Infinity being set in Japan. So Kotaku couldn't confirm Japan yet, but their sources said that the setting for Red had been requested by fans and had long been discussed internally, so that also very much seems to be pointing at one of these two games being set in Japan. But as we know, we are still a long way from any of these projects, the next relevant content being the Forgotten Saga game mode for Valhalla, which might land next week with the new update that was recorded by the PlayStation game size account, while the closest and official source of information on the next games is going to be the Ubisoft Forward event on September the 10th, where we are hopefully going to have a clearer idea about the future of Assassin's Creed, starting with Assassin's Creed Rift, which is likely going to be announced there. But if you can't wait until then, we have prepared a full video dedicated to everything we know about Rift up until now, so you can check that out before all the official information gets released in September. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.